Let's say you have an equation like this, x squared equals 9. How are you going to solve that equation? Well, one way of doing it is just to imagine what squared would give you 9. So if you know your squares, you know that 3 squared gives you 9. So you can say x is equal to 3. That's pretty easy to do. But we can also do it another way. What we can do is we can square root each side. So we can go like this. Square root this side and square root this side. And what you notice is if when you square a square root a square, it gets rid of the square. So you're just left with x. And then when you square root 9, you get 3. Now you're probably wondering why you need to do this. Um, why don't you just solve it by working it out in your head? Well, this comes in useful when, we, when you're dealing with more complex equations. This is a simple equation. You don't really need to do it this way. But in more complex examples, it is very useful. Now let's have a look at a slightly different example. This time we're told that the square root of x is equal to 4. And we have to find out what x is. So again, you can do this in your head. You can say the square root of something is 4. Well, that something must be 16. But we can also do a kind of a similar method to this. What, what we can do is we can get rid of the square root by squaring. Of course, we, we have to remember to do it on both sides. So if we square a square root, again, that just gets rid of the square root. So we're left with x here and 16 over here. So I guess the basic law that we can take away from these two examples is that if we want to get rid of a square, we can square root both sides of an equation. If we want to get rid of a square root, we can square both sides of an equation. Okay, so let's have a look at an exam question. It says, given that c is equal to the square root of y minus x, express x in, in terms of c and y. Okay, so here's your equation. We need to get x on its own, basically. That's what that's it. this is saying. x must be equal to an expression with c and y in it. So we need to get this guy on its own. Obviously, the first thing we need to do is get rid of the square root. And as you've just seen, the way we can do that is simply square this side and square this side. And once you square uh, this side, you just get c squared. So c squared. But when you square the other side, you're going to get rid of the square root. So you're just going to be left with y minus x. Okay, so final step is we want x on its own, so maybe we'll bring the minus x and bring it over here to become plus x, and bring this c squared over here to become minus c squared. So now you can see we've complied with what the question asks us to do, express x, x, in terms of y and c. So the key to doing this is get rid of the square root sign straight away and then try and get x on its own. Okay, let's have a look at another exam question. Given that t squared minus s is equal to r, express t in terms of r and s. So this time we want to get rid of the square. Now you might think, well, then we just have to square root this side and square root this side. That's not quite going to work because of the minus s here. So we need to get the t squared on its own before we can do the square root. So that means basically we have to bring the s over here to make it plus s. Now we can get rid of the square because the t squared is on its own. So all we have to do is square root both sides. And once we've square rooted both sides, we can actually change this to a t because it gets rid of the square. And that's our answer. We've expressed t in terms of r and s. t in terms of r and s. Finally, remember that in all of these questions, if you do something to one side, you have to do it to the other side. So you can't just square root this side and leave this undone. You've got to do the same thing over here.